Well, God bless you. This is Pastor Omar here back on my fourth installment on the study of 2 Thessalonians. I left you off in kind of a bad place. I left you off talking about eternal damnation. Let me pull up my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, we were in the scripture. We're still in, we're still in 2 Thessalonians and we're in the first chapter and it ended with this discussion on verse 9, 1, 9. They will undergo the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his strength. And when he comes to be glorified among his saints and admired on that day among all who have believed, and you did in fact believe in our testimony. Listen, I, I love this passage of scripture. Uh, and because it, it talks about one of the things that I learned. Uh, let me see. I don't think it's going to come up here, but let me let me let me do it this way and say say it like this. I just read chapter one, verse nine in the NET Bible. Oh, by the way, I told the people last time that I was going to find out what the NET stood for, and now I know that here's what NET stands for. Just for those people who wanted to know what it stood for, like me, NET the Bible is the New English Translation. It said that the NET Bible is a new English translation created by a team of 25 biblical scholars. Despite their theological and cultural differences, this group had the same goal to show their work. Readers are equipped to understand translations, decisions, and alternate readings in their footnotes. It's a great study Bible. That's what I use, the NET Bible, the new English translation. That's for those people who wanted that information. Now, we're going to go back to this thing about Jesus and about him coming. Yes, yes, yes. It says here. Let's get let's get it. In this version, it says this. I'm going to read that same um, verse that was verse chapter 8, 8, 8, 8. So it says, verse 7, and God will provide rest for you who are being persecuted and also for us when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared from heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared from heaven. He will come with his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with eternal destruction forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. When he comes on that day, he will receive glory from his holy people, praise from all who believe. And this includes you, for you believe what he told you, what, 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 for you believe what we told you about him. Listen. There is something that Apostle Paul taught. The Apostle Paul taught the people very, very early that there's going to be a day of judgment. Most of you already want that day of judgment because you think, you, you, you say, well, well, God, how can you be a just God and you allow Hiroshima uh, to happen? How can you be a just God and you allow the Holocaust to happen? How can you be a just God and you allow the enslavement of Africans for hundreds of years? How can you be a just God? Well, one of the things is nothing gets by. I want you to understand that. Nobody's doing anything. Nothing gets past the eye of God, the knowledge of God. So he, he said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. In fact, the only way I was able to be able to let go of my hate for white people was to know that God was going to uh, do vengeance. I still wanted my vengeance. Let, just let God do it. And I know his vengeance is going to be just. But now I know I'm not I'm not, not hating white people because of that. I, hate, I love white people now because God loves them. He loves all people. And now I love all people and including white people too but it had to be a mighty transformation i couldn't just leap there when i first was trying to understand about god i had to just get rid of the fact that god is going to do something about how they mistreated black folk this this thing about uh, george floyd and all these other kind of things that happen i i'd be mad some days some days i'd be fuming i'd be like lord don't i don't need, i don't need to see another slave movie i don't need to see any of that kind of stuff because all they do is make me mad but i thank god that i know at the end of the day Nothing gets by God and he's going to judge it all. And I don't have to worry about it. My job is to keep my hands clean and my heart pure, keep my thinking right and keep my actions right. If I can do that, I'll be all right. And I know that God will work out the rest. In this case, he's talking about the return. One of the, one of the, one of the early things that 
Apostle Paul taught these new believers is that there's going to be a day of judgment and Jesus Christ is going to come back. There's going to be a day of judgment and Jesus Christ is going to come back. Now, I've always longed for the day when Jesus Christ comes back. Some people don't. We, we're still trying to figure out how it's coming back. It's going to come back at two parts and come back in one part. Is it going to come back and rapture the church and then, and then have the tribulation in the middle of the tribulation, the part of the tribulation, and then he's going to come back. And then after that, he's going to do the judgment. I don't know the fullness of that. I'm not that deep of an eschatological student. I know some people who are, and I'll bring them to, uh, to help me to be a part of this. But for right now, I just know that Jesus is going to come back. Now, those people who wanted Jesus to come, Jesus came meek and mild. Jesus came meek and mild, riding on the lonely fold of an ass, right? He came in there riding in, uh, in, in Jerusalem uh, 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 on, a, on an ass. But that was that was a revolutionary mark all by itself. Because everybody know that only people that come riding on the ass into a city is those people who conquered some area and now they're coming back victorious. They don't need to ride on their stallion. They can ride on their ass or their colt. So when Jesus did that move, that was revolutionary. That was like, that, that, you know, we always say black. That was like power move. But he was doing the saying, I, I am not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. I ain't worried about y'all. I'm going to do what God called me to do. And I'm glad for that. But listen, since Apostle Paul talked about this day of judgment, and I remember reading about it, I want to read you one of my favorite passages. Is it in one of my favorite books, the book of Revelation, written by uh, Apostle John on the island of Patmos, he wrote this about the coming. Uh, and that's why I titled this, are you going to be riding on that white horse? Are you in the white horse club? club? Are you riding on the white horse? Do you have a white horse ride in your future? I don't know. But let's look at what the scripture says. It says this, that, uh, uh, where am I at? Here it is, right here. I'm going to read it out of this old King Jimmy, King James, King James version of the Bible. It says, and I saw heaven open. Remember, we read earlier that um, Jesus is supposed to come out of heaven. That's what Apostle Paul said to the Thessalonians. So this is John following up on that with another writing many years later. He said, and I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse. And he that's, I don't know if y'all seeing this. This makes me think, let me just make sure I'm reading this, but I don't even know if y'all seeing this with me. Let me find out if that's happening. I don't think so. Let me check. No, y'all not seeing it with me. I should have said something. <laughs> Let me show you the screen now. Maybe, maybe you were seeing it with me. Let's share the screen now for me. Here we go. Shit. Now, now I know you're seeing the screen. It says this. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So this person coming is going to judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. You know that we say, uh, John said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We beheld his glory, that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the Word of God that came as a man walking is now coming back again, riding on a horse, a white horse. And it goes and says this, and the armies which are in heaven followed him upon white horses. I hope to be on that one. Well, I, I always imagine myself riding with Jesus. We roll it. Come on, Jesus, let's go take care of this business because we've been waiting to do this for a long time. Look at it. He says, he said, he said that they followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he shall smite the nations and he shall rule them with a, iron, a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty God. <laughs> and it says this, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel stand in the sun and he cried out with a loud voice saying to all the fowls of the air in the midst of the heaven come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great god that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both small and great and i saw the beast and the king of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him 
that set on the horse and against his army. Wow, my God. That was just some of the clarity. So when, when Apostle Paul, he just said this, he was just saying a little bit. Apostle Paul was just giving a little bit of glimpse because maybe that's all he saw about. It. That's all he knew. Maybe he didn't have the revelation like what uh, John had. But here's what he said there. He said that he's going to come again. Where did he say that at? Uh, uh, so here it is in verse 10. When he comes, when he comes, to be glorified among his saints and admired on that day among all who have believed and you did in fact believe our testimony. And in that regard, we pray for you always. Listen, there is a day of coming. There is a actual judgment day. And that's one of the big, big, big things that the early church taught about. We don't talk about that much anymore because we all, you know, I, you know, the God that we is so meek and so mild and mild, the God that we have to do, and he's so, you know, he let everything go. It's, oh, anything goes, anything goes. That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is not a mean over. He doesn't do crazy things, but he will judge people who were, are wicked. If you don't want to be with truth, if you don't want to be with light, if you don't want to be with righteousness, if you don't want to be with goodness, if you don't want to be with all things positive, if you don't want to be with all that kind of stuff, you want to hang out with the dark force, well, hang out with them because you're going to have a day. And God said that he, he's setting up. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know if he's bringing people back. I don't know how he's going to do it. But we're going to be coming on them white horses with Jesus. I'm going to be riding right, right, right beside him. And because he lets it come early, I'm going to be riding right beside him, coming in, and we're going to do this warfare like it's supposed to be done. And we're going to root out evil in the earth. And then God will have his rule on the earth. They stay for a thousand years. That's part of the teachings of the early church. Most of us don't even know anything about that. We just know a little bit about, about God. We don't know that the scripture talked about that. We don't know that we are, we are being loved right now. We are, being, we are experiencing the grace of God right now so that we do not have to experience the judgment. We don't have to be uh, coming to God for a judgment. That's not going to be it. Because we know God, because we are in right relationship with him, because he's already delivered us, because we already have the testimony that we have faith in God and that we also have the testimony that we are growing in love for one another. Because we are walking with God, we are actually walking with the living Christ not the dead Christ. Remember, we just had uh, Easter not too long ago. We're not talking about the, the, the dead, the Christ that was on the cross. We're not just talking about the Christ that was in the tomb. We're talking about the risen Christ who comes. He, he said, the scripture said he's now sits at the right hand of the Father. But he said, I got to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes and they have the exact same spirit. In fact, the Holy Spirit does nothing but tell you about what the Son saw that the Father did. It's all set up like that. At the end of the day, Jesus is going to turn the whole kingdom over to God the Father. Most people don't even know that, but it's actually in the scripture. But for right now, I'm enjoying being an ambassador of love. I'm enjoying being a son of the most high. I'm enjoying being and taking advantage of all the rights and privileges that I have, even under persecution. Yes. Oh, yes, I have been persecuted. Oh, for sure. I've been persecuted for my name, for my faith, for my zeal for the Lord. I have been persecuted and I don't think it's going to stop. But I do know that I have peace in my heart. That no matter what goes down, God will take care of it. He's going to work it out. And I'm going to work out. It's going to work out for my good. Because the scripture says, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. Let's get back into the text. Did you know all this was in 2 Thessalonians? You probably didn't. You probably haven't even read 2 Thessalonians. I know I hadn't for a very long time. It wasn't until I was challenged by one of my good friends uh, to do this study that I said, well, let me go back and take a look at it. And remember what I was talking about? I said, here it is. It's coming up. We're going to finish this chapter. So right now, in this, in this uh, fourth installment, we're going to finish chapter 1. Verse 12 says this. Let's put it in context. And in this regard, we pray for you always that our God will make you worthy of his calling and fulfill by his power your every desire 